cheeseburger. Welcome to the World Wanderers podcast and Hot Wing Express. I'm Amanda. I am Ryan. <laughs> Do you want to clarify what you mean when you say Hot Wing Express? Because I feel like that kind of alludes to the fact that we've served a chicken wing business out of our apartment, which we have not. <laughs> That's uh, part of our new business model. <laughs> <laughs> Please visit www.theworldwonders.com. No, the World uh, Wonders podcast and hotwingexpress.com. <laughs> no, go to theworldwonders.com and click on Hot Wing tab. You can order your fresh hot wings delivered by Uber Eats. Yeah, but don't actually do that because that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Anyways, what are we talking about today? Beats me. <laughs> Do you have any ideas? You you know we're recording and whatnot. Yes, we're going to talk about making friends in a new city. Yes. It's a pretty alive topic for both of us. I think maybe a little bit more for me, but definitely for you as well. Yeah, so if you listen to the last episode of the World Wanderers podcast and Halloween Express. (laughs) (laughs) I think you need to clarify where that's coming from. So... The location of the airport in Atlanta is the Atlanta something Jackson Intergalactic Spaceport and Hot Wing Express. And that's my favorite thing about Atlanta. (laughs) So come to Atlanta just so you can check in on Facebook and... At the Hot Wing Express slash Intergalactic Spaceport. Yeah. You you can stay on our futon couch too if you want. We're talking about making friends in a new city because if you listen to the last episode we are in a new city last two episodes i feel like my road trip episode counts yeah so how is your well so let's rewind a little bit so um after we started traveling it was always an ambition of mine to live in a country other than canada don't take full credit for that ambition. That was my ambition too. Well, okay, like, but I didn't really care. <laughs> Your aspirations, I just cared about mine. Okay. Um, Solid partnership. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like that's kind of a common thing when people go traveling, right? It's like you travel for a while and you're like, oh, this traveling thing's pretty cool. You know, it would be cool if I lived one of these places that I was traveling to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or if you're me, you dream of living in every place you visit. Yeah, and I really found the episode of the podcast where we talked to Carolyn McPherson about living in the Dominican Republic. Um, Because she really hasn't done like long-term backpacking, but she's just been moving all over the globe, living in different new cities. And we talked about how to get yourself, or how she went about finding friends and really making a home in this new city that she's living in. And yeah, so we're kind of she, undergoing that process right now. Yeah. And it was cool talking to Carolyn um, because she's like single female. So it's like, I don't know, as a single female, I feel like sometimes it's like a little bit intimidating to just go out and like walk alone or like go out at night by yourself and like that sort of thing, especially when you're in like a new place and you don't know if it's safe or not. It's definitely like something that crosses my mind. But you're not a single female. I mean, technically I am. What What are you referring to? You mean because I'm in a relationship with yeah, you? Yeah, single. Yeah, but like, I'm not like married and you're not by my side all the time, so. You mean alone? Like, is that the word? Yeah, like mean? a solo female, I guess. Maybe is what I mean. Yeah, so how has your experience been trying to get, build a social safety net? Slash support network. Um, slash. slash. I'm not going to say it again. Acquaintances. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say how long you uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think we're done with that. And that joke now. Um, it has been interesting. It's, I mean, okay. So for me, it's, I grew up in a small town and then I moved like half an hour east and but still kind of like had my small town friends like nearby and like I'd go home for events and stuff like that. And then, you know, we traveled in and around living in Calgary and then we moved to Canmore. And for those of you who aren't familiar with that location, it's an hour East. So I feel like I've kind of 
really kept this like family friend buffer close to me. So it's like, you know, as I was making friends in Camor and Banff, I still had this like really good group of friends in Calgary that I could hang out with if I was like feeling lonely or, you know, needed connection or really needed like, um, I guess I was going to say somebody to talk to you, but like the beautiful thing about being alive in 2015 is that you can be anywhere in the world and you can talk to people at any time because of technology, which is super, super cool. And that has definitely made my adjustment here a little bit easier, um, in terms of, you know, talking to friends and stuff back home, but it's intimidating. I think that's like the biggest word. And I've been socialized my whole life through school or work or, you know, extracurricular activities. Like it's never, I've never really had to just go somewhere and not know anyone and not really like be put into something where I was going to meet people. And you don't have the, well, you don't have as much of an opportunity to just have friends by circumstance. Yeah. No, it's like, I really have to, like I can have like acquaintances by circumstance. Like, yeah, sure. I've had like conversations with people at like, you know, the yoga studio or that sort of thing. But in terms of like actually making friends, it's so much more difficult when you aren't just like put into these circumstantial situations. So, I mean, it's been like, it's been different for me for sure. I feel like I'm pretty like, you know, I'm nice. I'm, I think I'm nice at least. Like I would want to be friends with me, but it's like, if you can't get to know me, you can't be friends with me. You know what I mean? Like, does that make sense? So you're feeling like you haven't had the opportunities to get to know people. Is that what you're saying? Um, well, I mean, so I have, so like, I guess we'll kind of get into this, but it's like, I, I've, like spent a little bit of my first week and a half feeling like a pretty homesick, like really missing the mountains and like my friends and kind of my like safety blanket back there and my job just because everything was really different here. Um, and then I kind of, was just like, you know, like being sad about the life that I like chose to left, chose to leave, isn't going to really get me any further than my life here in Atlanta. And so I went to a run club put on by Lululemon, which is like felt pretty comfortable for me since I'm so familiar with like the company and the brand and all of that sort of thing. And I met some cool people there. So I think that was sort of like my first, like, I guess dipping my toes into the, like figuring out something that you like to do and then going and meet people who also like to do that and figuring out a way to socialize with them. Um, I mean, I definitely don't love running. I was more excited about the social bit, but you know, I like it enough to do it. But that's, so don't love running, but it's something you know how to do. But my point in getting at <laughs> is that I think we're both in a point in our lives where we feel comfortable going out and searching for friends, Right. Is that true? Yes. And so there's truth behind that statement. I think when I was like 20, I was more of like the trying to like play it cool. Oh yeah. I remember Uh, Ryan used to not add people on Facebook. Totally throwing you under the bus with that on the podcast. Yeah. That was kind of dumb. That's okay. Like you were 20 though. Like it's, you could, I, it's not like I was doing super intelligent things when I was 20. Yeah. But so, just, I was kind of living in this idea of having friends, you know, the friends were just like the people who are around you the most. You don't, and you're, you stay friends with the people you're friends with. I wasn't really thinking about how, um, my friends, people that I admire, people that I share values with people that I have, um, that are really, um, like, enriching the relationship that I have with them. Is it enriching? So traveling was kind of a start of a big shift for me to start thinking about being much more voluntary about 
the people I get into friendships with Mm -hmm. and really like searching out for people who I can really relate to and then making the effort to make those people my friends. Yeah. And create a group of friends that I really feel good about. Yeah. So moving to um, Atlanta, I've really tried to focus on that, trying to find people who I really admire who I would want to be friends with. Yeah. I think that's like a good way to find, like to add people to your life, which is pretty cool. (laughs) Which Which is pretty cool. Isn't that the best way to do it? Yeah, I think so. So the practical like applications of how do you try to find friends when you move to a new city? Um, I think that like meetup.com, which we talked about in our last podcast episode, and I put a link to on the show notes at www.theworldwanderspodcast backslash hot wing express. Kidding about that last bit. Um, <laughs> obviously it's gone on way too long. Yeah. I don't know why I brought it up again. It was kind of like your joke and then I feel like it ended and then I just brought it up again. Not that funny. That's okay. Um, but meetup.com is like a really good way to find people that are interested in the same thing you're interested in. I think so you've done that like a number of times. now. Yeah. I think, did we, I think we talked about it in the last podcast about going to a Bitcoin meetup and a Spanish meetup. Yeah. So. And so that's been a good way for you to kind of like connect with people who have similar interests as you. Would you say? Yes. Yes. Um, so for me, I actually haven't been to a meetup yet and I continue to just like watch these events go. And I mean, some of them I'm not that interested in. Some of them I legitimately can't go to because I've got something else going on, but some of them I could go to and I, you know, I'm held back quite a bit by like feeling scared. And so it's something that we were talking about before the podcast that kind of inspired this week's topic is you know, there's like this fear of like fitting in and being judged when you go into like a new social circle or you're going to meet new people because it's sort of, I don't know if it's like innately human nature, if it's just how we're sort of like taught as we grow up, but it's, you kind of get one chance to kind of make an impression on somebody. And then after that, you can obviously like sway somebody's opinion, but people are judging you as soon as they see you. Just, do you know what I mean? Well, some people are, and some people, well, everyone is a little bit. Everyone's making an assumption. And some people are making more assumptions. And some people are a lot more open to questioning their original assumptions. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so so. one of the ideas we were talking about is your ideal friends aren't the people who are going to snap judge you about the things you're wearing or maybe a word you're using or something that's really irrelevant to who you are. Like if you don't want to be friends with the people who are going to be like, Oh, I can't believe you're wearing those type of shoes or, Mm -hmm you're whatever he seems like a little bit less intelligent than the people I normally hang around with. I'm not going to be friends with them. Yeah. Those aren't the people you want to be friends with. So, well, maybe you do listener, but I don't want to be friends with those people. (laughs) So you have this natural kind of fear of wanting to, a fear of people judging you of wanting to fit in and, how much of that is natural and how much of that is nurtured is kind of don't ever figure out. But, <laughs> That's for another yeah. podcast episode. <laughs> but you have almost, you have this kind of motivation to try to fit in, but there's almost a good thing about not fitting in because not fitting in pushes away the super judgmental people. If you are wearing the wrong set of clothing to fit into this group, well, the people who are open-minded are still going to talk to you. They're still going to like be open to you as a human being. And the super judgy people are going to be avoiding you. So it's like almost better to not fit in. Mm-hmm. 
yeah i totally like i hear that and i get it and i understand the concept i feel like it's so much like easier in theory than actual practice it feels pretty intimidating to think about going somewhere where you don't or for me where i don't know anyone and i don't know what these people are like or and then for me i spend a lot of time thinking about you know how i need to look to have these people like me type thing which i think is a pretty it's pretty normal like it's hard to admit that that's something that goes through my head but i think that a lot of people probably have experienced that same thing how do you think traveling has changed that for you from before you went traveling and that desire to fit in versus now after doing some long-term traveling, meeting a ton of people, do you think it's made you more open? Yeah, definitely. I think that the first time I traveled, I kind of, you know, we met so many unique people and different people from all over the world. And it's interesting when you're just in a hostel room with people who are so different from yourself or, and you kind of are just like, Oh yeah, we're going for dinner. Like, do you want to come? And then you have this sort of like dinner date, I guess, with people who are, you know, they're just other people living their lives and they're not from the same background as you. And they're, doing something different than you're doing, but you can connect over the fact that you're both traveling and there's still things that you can talk about and learn from one another and that sort of thing. So I think that to answer your question, traveling has encouraged me to be more open to people and not to just look at somebody and be like, Oh, well you're not wearing the same type of clothes that I'm wearing. So we can't be friends. It's like, okay, like you look different than I do, but you know, what's, what's beyond that exterior, because we can probably connect over something that's like past the way you look. So you felt like it has made you um, more open to finding out like the substance of people beyond the outside appearance. Yeah. Like, I guess not judging a book by its cover, you could say, I think that's kind of like what traveling has encouraged for me or brought out for me. Um, it's still hard though to take that into, I guess like something like a meetup in a city. I think there's so much less risk involved when you're traveling. Cause it's like everyone's moving from place to place and you kind of are under the understanding that you're probably only going to see that person for one day, you know, maybe to kind of like three max, perhaps you'll see them somewhere along in your adventure, but most likely not. Whereas, you know, if you go to something like a meetup or you meet somebody and they invite you to do something, it feels like there's more of a risk involved in terms of like being the person that they want you to be to fit in. Yeah. There's more of an incentive to be a little bit fake or to put on a little bit of a a mask. Yeah. Because, you know, if there's somebody here who I have the potential of connecting with, it's like, I want that because I don't have connections here. Whereas if I'm traveling, it's kind of like, Oh, like you're heading North, I'm heading South. Like, cool. Yeah. Like let's, you know, spend a couple hours together, but, and then it's like, see you never like have a nice life. Enjoy your trip. Which is kind of like, I think that's the cool thing about traveling is that you have this opportunity to really just be who you are because you don't have any like investment on trying to like, I guess, convert a person. Does that make sense? Like convert somebody from acquaintance to friend. Just like the word conversion resonate with you. Yeah. It's like kind of makes sense. It's a good word to use. Yeah. There you're keep, meeting new people over and over and over again. So you don't. And it seems like you connect quicker with people and then it's just like, say goodbye and don't see them again. Yeah. It's just a different sort of world. It's, there's different expectations, I think, and that sort of thing. Um, I guess sort of tie that back to 
sort of like being in a new city and making friends. I think it's sort of along the same lines of what we talked about in other episodes, like in our studying Spanish in Buenos Aires. I just completely butchered Buenos Aires with my English accent. Um, it's that idea that you're not cognizant of the fact that you're wearing the same clothes three days in a row until all of a sudden you're seeing the same people those three days in a row. And then you're like, Oh, are they like wondering if I wash my clothes or if I have anything else and that sort of thing. So it's just kind of this different mentality, which it makes sense, but it's sort of weird at the same time. Yeah. And one of the things we talked about from moving to a new city is that it gives you this opportunity to be, to get out of the social pressure that kind of keeps you in stasis at home. Mm Mm-hmm that your friends want to see you continuing to be the same person. They want to see consistency. Whereas if you go somewhere new and make new friends, they don't have any expectations for you. Um, so how do you feel? Because it's kind of, I guess one of the things that's tough about moving to a city like Atlanta versus moving to be in more of like an, expat community like if we moved to colombia or like central america Mm -hmm. you'd have so much more in common with people like right off the bat yeah at least with fellow travelers who are now living in whatever country you're living in yeah Whereas like everyone here is kind of just like doing their thing you know they live in atlanta and work here no one there a lot of people have moved here Yeah. A ton of people have moved here. It seems like, and I mean, it's kind of interesting too, to compare it to somewhere that's super transient, like Banff, where people are kind of like moving from other places. And I feel like people are looking for friends somewhere like Banff. And I know that there's people, other people in Atlanta looking for friends, but it's like, how do you find those people when there's a population of over 6 million? Because people seem to just go about their day. You know, people just go to yoga. They're not interested in being there to make a new friend because they don't need a new connection in their life. Cause most of the time, I mean, I feel like with so many people there, they're already too busy to manage everything that's going on in their hectic lives that they're not in search of somebody new to add to that. Does that make sense? No, absolutely. Yeah. So I think that's, I think that's like the thing that makes me say that making friends here has been intimidating is that it's, I feel like it's been rare for me to encounter somebody who is interested in adding me to their life. So like I've seen, to take the initiative. yeah. And I've seen a lot of the same people at, um, the bar studio that I've been going to, but I feel like these people, it's what they do every single day they don't come there to make friends they're there to do their workout and then they're there to move on with the rest of their day because their day is busy and they don't have space in their lives to add somebody else or they're not like in the market for that you know what i mean what is it about taking initiative to say like you're at the bar studio and someone you've seen there a couple times what is it like how do you feel when you think about going over to them and being like hi i'm amanda I just moved here. Um, Would you like to go get coffee sometime? You look cool. Oh my God. The thought makes my palms sweat. That's like terrifying. It's so like making yourself so vulnerable and just putting yourself out there. It's a pretty, pretty scary thing. Why do you think it's scary? Because there's like that room for rejection i think i don't know it's just like not something they i'm used to doing i think that's why it's scary for me but what's so what's like the downside risk of doing something like that i mean almost nothing maybe a little bit of embarrassment so why do you think it feels so risky i don't know mr psychologist I feel like you're psychoanalyzing me. Um, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on that? I think it's like just scary to put yourself out there. Yeah, so it's emotional risk. 
It's like, why put a bullseye on my face when I could just like pass by without not, without this bullseye on my face. So I think it's kind of a self-esteem thing when you feel really confident in who you are and that you have value as a person, you can go up to someone and be like, Hey, I'm pretty awesome. You may want to be friends with me. And if they don't, then that's kind of their thing. It's not really something you're responsible for versus when maybe you're feeling a bit low and you go over to someone and you're like, there's, there's this thing and it kind of goes back to what we were talking about with me at 20 trying to be cool and not really like take initiative to make friends where you want to be friends with people who want, it's like that there's this like Groucho Marx quote, like, Oh, I won't join any club that'll have me where you want your friends to want to be friends with you more than you want to be friends with them. Cause then that proves your value somehow. That's just a power game though. And I but, don't, so that's, uh, I don't the, want the to idea play of, that either. I'm not saying that's what you're thinking, but I kind of feel like this is kind of the idea of why it's emotionally risky is this idea of valuing yourself in comparison to other people and then wanting to be friends with someone is signaling that you think they are a value. Yeah, that's an interesting point. This idea that it's like this unconscious behavior that we're doing. In like order this, to- it's like a, yeah, you said power game, kind of like this like social positioning thing that happens. Yeah, and it's all very at the unconscious level, which is kind of interesting. Um, and so that is, we've talked about it on previous episodes when you are in uh, a work environment, a school environment, when you don't have as much like choice over the people you have in your life, these like social power structures kind of matter more. And so that's one of the like really um, liberating things about going traveling. You feel this sense of disregard for what the people you're encountering think about you. Yeah. Which is a great way to live your life. And oh, I think yeah. that's an ideal way to live your life. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I completely agree with that. I think that's one of the things I love about traveling so much is it's just like, I am who I am in that moment. And the people who meet me, meet me as I am. And there's no expectations to how I have been in the past because they don't know how I was in the past. And there's no, you need to be like this in the future because, you know, there's just, they don't know me in the past and they don't know they're not thinking about the future because our friendship isn't really going to be a friendship in the future. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's an interesting concept and it, yeah, I mean, I'm striving to create social, I mean, I guess friendships where there isn't those power games and where I can just be who I am with those people. And I'd like for my friendships to develop in Atlanta based on, having common interests. And if somebody's not, you know, if we're not having a conversation or if I don't have fun, like I don't want to continue that friendship. If that, yeah. Yeah. And then you like, cause you have and not you, but like people y'all <laughs> y'all <laughs> have like, there's certain friends where you get together and you're like, you feel alive and energized and there's certain friends we get together and it feels kind of like me. Yeah. And I think that if you have your life for everyone, you get to get, and obviously you can't have everyone, but you know, if you increase the amount of people who really make you feel alive, mm-hmm. you're way better off. Yeah, definitely. Um, so to get back to sort of providing information for our listeners out there who are also (laughs) in a position where they're in a new city and they want to make friends. Do you have any other suggestions for things that people can do? I know we've already talked about, um, I mean, working for Lululemon, I'm a huge advocate of that company. And I think that if you're in a city where there is a Lululemon and you like to be outdoors and you like to be active, like there's a huge community there. And I think that that's a really cool way to make friends. Um, obviously meetups, anything else? Yeah. So it's just about, I think 
beyond even becoming comfortable in a new city, but like really pushing yourself to grow as a person and have a good life is about learning how to handle taking more emotional risk. So when you, and this isn't something I'm trying to like tell people to do. It's something I try to practice and like obviously don't do all the time. Yeah. But there's this thing called the coffee challenge that I learned about, I think some guy, a guy who runs a company called AppSumo where you go into a coffee shop and you ask for a 10% discount and then don't tell them why you just say, Oh, because I want it. And it feels incredibly awkward and scary to do it. (laughs) We've both done it. It's like super (laughs) awkward. (laughs) And people look at you strange, but there's no, there's no risk and you're better off for doing that. And so making a good group of uh, friends that you really want, it's, you can practice doing that. You can practice taking those risks. And if you go up to people and are like, Hey, do you want to go for a coffee sometime? People usually say yes. And there's not really those risks. So, um. so you're advising people if they're feeling shy or uncomfortable or a little bit scared to maybe start with, you know, going into these public places and just like putting yourself out there and asking for a discount. And then slowly over time, you become more comfortable and just asking for what you want. So you see this person at a yoga class that intrigues you and you go and you just start this conversation with them. Is that kind of what you're getting at? Well, I think that could be a way to practice taking emotional risk. I think that it is something you can practice. That idea of scaring yourself once a day is something that when I've been following that, I have felt better and better and better about myself, but just not respecting that fear of risk that doesn't exist. Yeah. The like inauthentic fear. Um, Oh man, I was going to just say something linked to that. Oh, I was going to say, so for me, you talk about like scaring yourself once a day, like to be honest, being in a new city that's so different from where I'm from, I feel like I have scared myself multiple times every single day that I've been here. And that hasn't even been really with social interactions. So I think it's important to remember that like for people who are moving to a new city, that it is like very overwhelming and it's okay to be overwhelmed and it's okay to kind of take things slow and don't put so much pressure on yourself to have a group of best friends within the first like week that you're there. If you don't know anyone, like it does take time to like convert people and you want to really like convert people that seem like people that you actually want to spend time with and not just people that, you know, you can fill your days with so that you have somebody to talk to. Yeah it's probably better to be experiencing some loneliness to to hanging around with people who aren't people who you like hanging around with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, is there anything else you want to touch on before we sign off on this episode? So just the, I feel like we've, dealt a bit in like abstract ideas instead of actually like practical stuff. Um, But I've really found going to meet up groups to be a good way to meet people. Yeah. I think we've, I think we've covered that. I think people are pretty clear that meetups are a good way. Is there anything else like meetup that you can think of that you would recommend for people? Well, so there's a lot of like groups of people who exist like, but not on, meet up so if you go to cafes there's usually like oh there's some sort of whatever meditation group Mm -hmm. blah 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 group walking group bird watching thing yeah i think like positioning yourself at places that are kind of like within your values so like if you value if you're sort of like into the like yoga health food that sort of thing. Like your local health food store will probably have a community board ad on it that has posts about like different groups and that sort of thing. Um, or if you're more interested in, I don't know, like, so there's a place called like Atlanta tech village here and they do a lot of like free events and stuff. So that would be something really cool for people to check out if you're really interested in 
like technology and like innovation and that sort of thing. Yeah. So it's kind of like searching out the places within your city that are kind of aligned with the things that you enjoy and then finding different events around that. Cause that's how you're going to meet people that are going to be interested in those similar things. Yeah. And so one time events, like if there's a conference coming to your town that you like, or some speaker or something like that, that's a good way. And then also just remembering that when you move somewhere new, you're new. Most people you meet aren't new. Like they've been there for a while. Mm -hmm. So like you said, they've probably got a whole bunch of stuff going on in their lives and they're not feeling this need to add more things. Um, So you kind of have the, have to take the initiative to make these connections. Like if you go to an event and this is something that I've haven't done myself where I could have been like, Oh, Hey, like we should go for coffee sometime. Mm -hmm. So I would like to push myself to take more initiative to turn people who are like, you're just meeting one time into someone who is more of the turn them from acquaintances into a friend convert. Well, we're not selling anything. It's just like, it's the word that works best for me to each his own. Um, anyways, so we will post some show notes with kind of like the overview of what we've talked about on www.theworldwonderspodcast.com. Um, we are always happy to take questions or comments or feedback. So please reach out to us if you have anything to say. Um, if you're looking for a friend in Atlanta, I'm also looking for a friend. Yeah, so. I was just about to say that if you're in Atlanta, come find us on Facebook. Yeah. Find us on Facebook, send us an email. I would be happy to go for coffee with you any time of the day or week. <laughs> not to make myself too anytime available. Any time of the day, whenever. No, I <laughs> sleep at night though. So not then. Um, anyways, thanks for <laughs> listening <laughs> and have a great day. Bye-bye.